Hey guys, I just wanted to let you guys know that this episode is brought to you by Freedom Act Lubbock. It's time to exercise your right to vote. Each year in Lubbock, around 10% of the population chooses and makes decisions on leadership and other important issues for the other 90% of the people who live here. This results in the same kind of leaders and the same kind of results year after year. Democracy works best when we all participate and have our voices heard. That's why we're asking you to vote and take four other registered voters with you to the polls this time. Early voting is from Monday, April 22nd through April 30th, and election day is May 4th. Let's vote for a change. Vote for Proposition A and stop the arrest. This ad is paid for by Freedom Act Lubbock. So get out there and vote, guys, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Episode 36 of Lords of Film with Rainer Garza. Well... (laughs) <laughs> Here we are on this Monday. Yeah. April <laughs> April eighth? Yeah. April eighth. Yeah. Eclipse day. We survived Eclipse it. Day. How are how are y'all's retinas? <laughs> I feel fine, you know. Well, yeah. I feel like my allergies are messing up my retinas a little bit, but like... it has been an ass weather day today. Yeah. How is how is your experience with the eclipse? You were in charge of children. Oh shit. Uh <laughs> it was it was good. Um were were y'all having to be like, hey, at any of them? No, not really. I mean, kids are kids, and they're like, that was it? That was boring. And they were like, I guess that now we live in a generation where kids truly believe everything they hear on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Like, kids, like, seriously thought, uh, like, the, th- like the apocalypse or the you know, <laughs> uh, rapture was going to happen. Yeah, I saw this, like, meme that was, like, what Facebook thought the eclipse was, and it was, like, cows in the air, like a tornado <laughs> or something. For real. Yeah, I know, because, okay... I'm not going to give too much information on Bradley, but he's a teacher. So they're essentially they helped the they you took the kids out to watch yeah, the eclipse. So they all bought us glasses. We treat it like it was like a fire drill uh-huh. without pulling the fire alarm. So we had to like go in an orderly, in an fashion, orderly out. fashion out outdoors. And um, I was thinking about you today because I was just like, how do you ensure that those kids just aren't like. <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? Well, there were like, a few okay. kids that were in my class that were like, Mr. Garcia, I stared at it five times and nothing happened. And then oh, I'm gosh. sure they're feeling they like have the headaches right today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So I I was seeing like the glasses everywhere for like the longest time, like Five Below, Market Street, Walmart, Dollar Tree. Like they were everywhere and then they were nowhere all of a sudden. So right. I didn't get any. And so... Today, it was me and Ray in the salon in the morning, and I was telling her I didn't have glasses, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a picture. So I had her take a picture of me from <laughs> inside of the salon outside, and I asked Instagram if somebody could bring me some glasses. If not, my retinas were going to be deteriorated. And yeah, somebody brought me some. Wow. Yeah. It, within that's an hour, somebody dropped off some glasses. Shout out X. That's power. Yeah, I was about to come <laughs> drop you off some. Hell yeah. Little... You, some people were like, go to Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> It was that. You didn't get that nasty ass slush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were like, if you buy this slush, you get glasses. And I was like, that's nasty. Um, people were telling me to go to Sonic, to go to the library. Somebody told me to go to like Armadillo Camera. I was like, mm, oh, shit. no. <laughs> go to a welding shop and just wear the, the welder's goggles. That's what my parents <laughs> were doing. Oh, yeah. yeah one of yeah. my clients was like, yeah, my husband's just going to wear his welding helmet. And yeah. I was like, God bless. If it works, you know what I mean? Right. But it was cool. I mean, space and nature and. The earth is cool and the moon and the sun and all that shit. And I think that whether you're a believer in like horoscopes or astronomy or anything like that, it's those things definitely have an effect on us. And so it was just really cool to to see it. And so it was a slow day, which was ass for like my money, but <laughs> it was a good day to like be able to like go out like every like 10 minutes or so just to be like kind of like check where it is. Yeah, yeah, but it was also so cool because it's like all the employees in the shopping center that I work at and like all the restaurants and stuff, everybody was like just outside. It was it was actually kind of ooky spooky because yeah. it also, I don't know if y'all noticed, like it got like cloudy and windier. It it got colder yeah. when it was like peaking. And I was like, ooh, this is spooky. My yeah. mom uh, called me before <coughs> we went out. She was said, hey, the news said, listen out for the birds. The birds go quiet. Sure enough, like there was birds flying, but they stopped making noise. So I guess I, I guess they think it's turning like night. That's why they go silent. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I was scared about Gomez because I was like, oh, he's by himself. Oh. Well, because like I was doing my client yesterday, 
And she told me she was home. I swear we'll talk about movies here in a second, okay? We're talking about this event, this world event that we survived. Um, but she was telling me that she was home, her and her husband were home, when the solar eclipse happened last year. And that the dog was like, let me in the house. Like, they were outside oh, trying to look at it. And the dog was, like, crying and, like, <laughs> yapping to go inside. And that once they put her inside, she was, like, yapping for them to come inside. <laughs> I think it's only if they're outside, they'll feel it. They'll freak I'm out. I'm sure Gomez was... <sighs> yeah, this morning I, like, left him home with, like, Spongebob playing oh. on the TV. And, like... <laughs> he felt safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, carrots. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love giving him carrots. We share carrots. But no, I think uh, the last time it passed through Texas, like, the way it did... Uh, the science teachers, I think they said it was 1900. I was wondering, like, one of my clients was like, how often does it happen? Because I gave him some glasses to look out of, and he was like, how often does this occur? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think the next one like this will happen in 20 years from now, but it will go through more west. So we'll still see it, but not as good as – because I think – here in Lubbock, it covered like 88%, mm-hmm. so still a good chunk. Yeah, we were in that range of 80 to 90%, but I heard Dallas yeah. it went like got dark, it like dark. fully. Like yeah. they fully got the effects of the eclipse, which yeah. is really cool. I saw some videos on Facebook of like just complete darkness. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. So, I saw this like reaction on TikTok, and it was this lady. She was like, wow, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, the cool thing I saw was on um, the UT campus in Austin. Uh-huh. They had the band, the UT band, yeah. and, and as it was about to fully covered, uh, they were playing the uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey music. Oh, that's that's the, terrifying. Da, da. <laughs> that's really. Terrifying. I would have really thought the rapture was happening. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would have been like, I would have been like in my apartment, like hearing that in the distance and being like, oh my god, I gotta delete all, I gotta delete everything. I have to. Krubic, Krubic was right. Yeah. Like TikTok was right. Really I was like wiping my phone. I'm like deleting my passwords and shit. <laughs> oh no! So we got Reina Garza. I think that this is like the first I've like chatted with you here and there, but I've never actually like sat down and talked to you. Yeah, I know it's weird. <laughs> like I've talked to Brad. I only talk to you at parties. Like, yeah, that's just a, like yeah, yeah, I feel like I just like, kind of chit chat with you. Yeah, I'm always having to like yell at you guys because <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's nice to be here. Yeah, I'm so honored. introduce yourself. Introduce yeah. yourself. Um, I'm Raina. <laughs> uh huh. Um, I don't really do much. I like you're to in sleep. a band. Yeah, I'm in a band. Okay. that's all I do. <laughs> that's all I do. I like I do music stuff and then I lay in bed. And I watch videos on my phone. <laughs> or like I play video games. You're in Ghost Lux. Yeah, I'm in Ghost Lux. What have y'all been up um, to? Not I've, I've never long. gotten to see you guys. I oh, feel bad. Sucks. that cause like you, you, guys, you, guys, you guys were like on a on a roll, like playing for a long time. I just, it never lined up with like my schedule and stuff. Yeah. And so I'm excited to see y'all again whenever y'all do play. Yeah, we've, we've kind of like changed a little because like we, um, Abby's not in the band anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's been like since November. So we took a little bit of time off to just kind of figure out like what we're going to do from yeah. here because Abby was like really important to the band being like a main vocalist and a guitar player. Makes sense. Um, so now we're just like a trio. And I mean, we have some cool stuff going on. Like we're going to play that uh, that tech vinyl thon. They just announced it like today. It's on the 19th, I think. Oh, this or the one? 20th. It's on the 20th. Yeah. Of course, it's on 420. Shout yeah. out tech doing 420 activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think supposedly we're going to headline it. I don't really know a whole lot of details about it yet. No, that's cool. But... So like Ghost Lex, uh, do you guys genre wise sub genre wise what do you where do you guys kind of sit at or like where do y'all play um, let's see we kind of can fit like anywhere we kind of do like the jake's metal mm-hmm. crew sometimes and we also do like the indie house show stuff yeah um but i would say we're just like kind of indie rock but like with punkish yeah stuff in there we kind of just do whatever we want <laughs> we don't really we're just like oh this sounds cool sure yeah. So besides the the vinyl thon, do y'all mm-hmm. have any other shows pop, 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 popping up after that? Yeah, we're gonna play at the uh, the chapel on the nineteenth, so like the day before vinyl thon. That's that emos and yes weirdos or yeah, something. Yes, okay, one. emos and weirdos. Yeah, we're playing that one, and then um, we're gonna take a break for a little bit because we're gonna film a music video in May. Um, and that's going to be pretty cool. We're sp- hopefully, we're spending a lot of money on it. So hopefully it's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah, I remember you telling me about the music videos. It's still yes. going to be the, I won't give out too much information, <laughs> but is it still the prom theme? Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Yeah. yeah, we're actually doing that. We're going to like a, the director. It's um Adam Paul Stone. No, oh, okay. Yeah, he does a bunch of I work. did a, I was an extra in this film oh, like, yeah 
years, years ago. Yeah. How to play a bouncer in a bar. You know what? Whenever <laughs> you told me about that, because I remember you telling me about that at a party. I watched that short film and I saw you. I oh, like, really? You're like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. yeah. That's when I was like skinny, skinny too. <laughs> yeah. Because hell, that was like 2014 maybe. Yeah, because you said you like ago. blew like smoke or something. And I was like, yeah, yes. they, uh, <laughs> yeah, so what happened was uh, Adam was like, hey, you're a big guy. I'll have you sit as the, the bouncer. <laughs> He's like, all you have to do is when the, this character walks in, you're gonna uh, puff the cigarette and blow smoke as he's at him while he's walking by. Oh. At that time, I I had never smoked a cigarette in my life. <laughs> so are you fighting and I, for your I life? I was like, I had the cigarette. I didn't know how to light it. I was just <laughs> 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 so like everyone else was smoking in the room, but they gave me a green tea cigarette. So it's a cigarette, mm. but it's it has tea in it. Instead, okay. oh, so you're, but, it was like, like an herbal smoke. Yeah, okay. so they were like, "Do not inhale it. If you inhale it, you like can't stop coughing." Yeah, because it's it's like a movie prop, so yeah. it's fake tobacco, I guess you could say. I so. can literally like imagine like young Bradley being like, <laughs> and just accidentally, <laughs> oh, I, and just like a big ass. So, just I, coming so out. I remember <laughs> the take when you see it, you, you can't see it happening, but in my mind, like I, I feel like it's clear as day. Because I remember I had to take a big puff, and when I blew the smoke at him, as he's walking by, I'm like, like like that. Well, the smoke went back into my eye, so I'm like all <laughs> twitching. But luckily, like the... I fade, like out. I like fade out in the background, so. <laughs> so you don't see me like, oh. The bouncer's just like crying in the background. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, that was young, innocent Bradley. Oh, well, oh the good old go. days. That'll be, that'll be cool to look forward to. Yeah, it's not going to come out to like um, June-ish, I don't think. That's but, soon. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been I'm, planning it forever. Like for so long. No, it's also especially I've I've been part of projects where like they take like months to execute or whatever, yeah. and it's like when it gets there, it's just like damn, time just flew by. Right. Like six months, six months flies by. But you hit me up or you hit us up. You wanted to talk about Darren Aronofsky. Am I getting the? Yeah, Darren. Aronofsky. So I was looking. Okay, I suck because I've only seen two films from him. Okay. I've only seen Black Swan mm-hmm. and Mother. Okay. So that's what I can contribute to this conversation. Okay. And we can talk about Ari Aster and shit like that. Have you seen any Dar- uh, Darren? Uh, Bronson, the. Okay, the Tom so that Hardy. the wrestler was part of his and his the wrestler. Stuff. I've seen that. Um, mm-hmm. The fighter. Oh, uh, he didn't do the fighter. That was uh, that was a different director. I thought I saw it in his. Yeah. The there's the something with Christian Bell. It, no, he didn't do that one. Let me look nope. it up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking. Yeah, because I haven't. So I've, I haven't seen Black Swan. I've seen portions of it, but the majority of his movies, or the three or four movies I've seen, mm-hmm. they've all been just like really, um, like impactful. Like they all just like really stuck with me after I saw. What them. movies are they? Oh, he did. He did the whale. I saw that. Oh, That's the one with. See, I didn't get to see the whale. Well. I was so I'm so scared to see it because I feel like I'm just gonna be so sad. Yeah. it's gonna make me feel so heavy, and I don't. See, that's the, the thing with his movies. They always just make me feel like some visceral, like... Yeah, yeah. you watch The Whale, and you're like, maybe I don't need that extra piece of pizza. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get full on with The Whale, it's... What what does it necessarily go, like... Like, what is it about, yeah. exactly? So, uh, Brendan Fraser plays, you know, he's, he's an ex-teacher who has a food addiction. And he's just massively overweight. Can't move. Uh, just pretty much just stuck in his um his, his apartment, yeah. yeah, and pretty much his family. He, it's a drama. Him, he's trying to get uh get to know his daughter again, mm. uh, because he had a uh, him and his wife had a divorce, and so he's not a teacher anymore. So, but he teaches online classes, mm. but he doesn't cover. Uh, he doesn't show his face. He always makes up excuses like, "Oh, my camera's broken. I can't really." Uh, so, so all you can hear is my voice. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, pretty much it's just a person who is just lazy, giving up on life. Just Just can't. Yeah. Like there's scenes where, uh, he'll order like three large pizzas and he just fully like just eating it, eating like three, like huge foot long subs. It's just like a... It, there are a few parts where it's like it's gross, like yeah. pretty much. And then 
it just goes deep down into that psych of you you just giving up pretty much. It seems so heavy, especially yeah. if it's like almost like a father daughter film. Because uh -huh. I heard that that's kind of something it touches on. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Just their like relationship mm -hmm. that's just kind of a little warped, and mm -hmm. especially like food addiction. Like I've like. I've lost a massive amount of weight, but it kind of left me with like a weird relationship with food. Mm -hmm. So I've had those moments where like, maybe I'm not eating three large cheese pizzas or whatever, yeah. but like I'll catch myself kind of like, I think you're binging. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I could do it. I tried to watch the Danish girl for like another review we did a while back and it was just too heavy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't. And so I feel like the well would be one of those things with me. Yeah. Same with Requiem for a Dream. Is that not one of his that's other films? Yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's one I was going to talk my, about. One of my yeah. best friends, Bree, has, I've been, we've been friends for like 12 years. And she always wants me to watch that. And I, I don't know what it is. I'm like, I don't know if I can. I saw that about. 12, I will. But... I saw that about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those movies where I feel like I need to watch it again because. Like, I've grown since then. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really fully understand it because that was Young and Innocent Bradley years. So but. That was me with Chasing Amy, <laughs> straight yeah. up. Yeah, like, I watched it, like, years ago, and I was like, oh, it's, it's a great movie. And mm -hmm. then I watched it recently, and I was like, oh, my God. What's yeah. cool about Requiem for a Dream is I can't remember the act actress name, but she plays the mom on The Exorcist. You know what I'm talking um, about? Um, the mom yes. On the Let's see. What is her name? Her oh name gosh. is Ellen oh. Burslin. I think I but yeah, she was on The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. She plays the mom. Yes. She was nominated for that film. A lot of people always say she should have won for that movie. She ate that role. Yeah. <laughs> they all did really good. Yeah, that movie messed me up. But yeah. It's like one of those that you could only watch like maybe once. I've watched it like two or three times just so I could like Feel dissect it, it and yeah. like maybe see it at different stages of my life, kind of like you were yeah. saying. But a young yeah. Jerry Leto's in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but film will do that to you. It's like you can just kind of take it in and kind of just like observe it from like maybe like a almost like a distant standpoint. Like if you watch it like when you're really young or if you watch it at a moment that you can't really empathize or understand mm -hmm. and then life will harden you or life happens to you a little bit. You'll revisit it. And it's just it takes on a whole new impact meaning and it sits with you differently. Yeah. Like instead of you just being like, oh, OK, that's what it was. It was like. Oh my God, I'm feeling this because, you know, and I, I like revisiting movies sometimes like, um, throughout my whole life, like since I was like 11, I've loved Girl Interrupted mm. with Angelina Jolie, Winona Ryder. And it, I have related to different characters throughout my lifetime. Right. And I, the book never sat as heavy with me as the film did mm -hmm. for whatever reason, but I will always revisit that. It's it, I don't know. It's just one of those, like, when you need to come back to yourself, you watch Girl Interrupted, even mm -hmm. though it's a heavy film. Is is that the one? Are, are they in a prison or a mental hospital? They're in a mental okay, institution. Right. It's yeah. in the 60s. Yeah. Because okay. mm -hmm. yeah, um, Angelina won the Oscar for that one. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. For Lisa. That, have you seen it? Lisa? Or, or no, like, her character's name is Lisa. Uh-uh. No. no. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, I, I know about it, but no, I haven't fully watched okay. it through. Brittany so. Murphy's character? Yes. Like Brittany. Man. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> All right. these, and it's got like, it's got such huge names that ended up, you know, like becoming like huge, huge A-listers. But yeah, no, it essentially is about this um, girl named Susanna who attempts suicide and she gets committed. Mm -hmm. um, well, she commits herself kind of unknowingly. I don't know, but she gets committed to a, to an institution. And although she is like, yes, yeah, she's got problems she doesn't have as heavy of problems as like maybe a schizophrenic or somebody with like a narcissism disorder or like an e a full-blown eating disorder or like a um what's that disorder where like they lie a lot uh, compulsive liars yeah. Yeah. Like, compulsive liars yeah so they've got so many different types of people like in this institution and she's having to live with them but also relate to them and exist with them and it's it's a really good movie. I recommend it. Yeah. I think sometimes it gets pitted and it's like it's a girl movie or mm -hmm. like a women's movie, but it's no, it's it's really great. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. I like that movie a lot. What other Darren Aronofsky movies? Um, my mind just went blank on everything he's ever made. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> like, hmm. I remember seeing Black Swan. I want to say I might have been in high school or like in college when that came out. No, I was in high school. I was in high school. And, you know, I haven't watched it since then. I think I maybe saw it as like an edgy 
drama mm-hmm. thriller, but I think actually now I'd probably interpret it as a horror. Yeah. Yeah, that's one I still haven't seen. I'm surprised I haven't seen it because one of my favorite films of all time is Whiplash. Mm-hmm. And okay. that always gets compared with... What's uh, Whiplash? Whip. Oh. So Whiplash is... Whiplash. Whiplash is about a college uh, jazz drummer who uh, gets accepted into like the best like you know jazz band in the nation Mm -hmm. well jk simmons plays a um instructor but he's like very mean like he's just the whole movie he's like like fuck you like if you can't do it right then get the fuck out of my room like that Mm -hmm. kind of thing like he calls yeah he calls like like there's a part where you know a guy playing the trombone is a is a big guy he gets sad because he messed up, and J.K. Simmons is like, "What? There's not a Mars bar down there." He's just like very like Jesus. Yeah, he calls him. He, he calls people like you fuck, you bastard. Like just goes on and on. But it's about uh, Miles Teller who pretty much tries to prove him, prove himself, but prove J.K. Simmons' character. Okay. And mm-hmm. so uh, it's pretty much it's mainly about. You know, something that you're truly passionate about. It's about giving your soul into what you love. Mm -hmm. And um, I always hear comparisons with Whiplash and Black Swan because Black Swan deals with ballet. So it's kind of the the same thing. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think like kind of now, like in retrospect, yeah, Black Swan is, it's pretty Mm -hmm. crazy. It's almost like a vanilla version of Suspiria with no Mm -hmm. like supernatural shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like perfection it's, type. Genre. Yeah, it's it's definitely more psychological, like thriller horror, like in that genre. But it's, I want to say it's like the last like twenty minutes that's like a little jarring, where mm-hmm. it's just like, oh my god. But um, speaking of jarring movies, fucking Mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. you never seen Mother. I've never seen Mother. Do you no. know about like I why know. it's like? Why it's called Mother? No, like, do you know, like, what, like, made everybody, like, oh, my God, yeah. during the, the movie? Because technically, <laughs> like the scene. I mean, the way it's been described to me is, yeah, there's a house. Yes. And Jennifer Lawrence is Mother. Mm-hmm. And Javier Bardem is, technically, it's like a metaphor where Harvey Bardem is supposedly God. Yeah. And Jennifer Lawrence is Mother Earth, and her house is Earth. And all these people start coming in, right? Is that yes. what it technically is? Yeah, so is? essentially yeah. it starts off, they're in this house together, and he's, I think, a writer or a poet or something, mm-hmm. and they bought the house so he could be, like, secluded so he could write, right? Mm-hmm. And she is pregnant, but she's also renovating the house. It's her passion project. Mm-hmm. So it starts off really, like, warm and very, like, nothing could really go wrong because they're in the middle of nowhere. It's just them. <laughs> they're in love. They're fine. Um, and then... It's it's kind of like it it's very gradual how it kind of snowballs into this chaotic like scene eventually towards the end but um people just start coming to the house in need of things and the husband is speaking for the wife and letting people in letting people stay letting people take letting people um just essentially inhabit the house mm-hmm. Not necessarily living there, but just acting as if it's theirs. You know what I mean? And then just these cases get more extreme as her pregnancy kind of goes further and further until there's a point where there's just almost like a mixture of like a mob and like a rager and like almost like an attack on their house. Mm -hmm. She ends up giving birth. She falls asleep immediately after giving birth because it's this exhausting task And she wakes up to this crowd has taken her baby to praise it. And as they're passing the baby, the baby snaps. Yeah. Oh, shit. Like, there's literally, like, a a newborn infant. And you see, like, it's, like, neck just snap back. It's fucking... Yeah, it was... God. It was heavy. I'm not a mother. I am not... I didn't have a motherly bone in my body at the time. Like, I was very young when I watched it. You know, younger. So I wasn't... I don't know. I don't want to sound like fucked up. You know what I mean? But it's like, I guess like with age, I've kind of become like a little bit more nurturing and like more empathetic and like oh, babies, babies, babies. You know what I mean? And right. at the time I was just like, that's fucking wild. Like yeah. when I watched it, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like it, like it, my heart sunk. Yeah. And I'm, I never get like that 
obvi- obviously you've seen we all see what i see yeah, so, <laughs> yeah like yeah, i don't re- i don't have crazy. a reaction to those things and it made my heart drop like just and it's fucking cgi like it's obviously cgi but it's yeah. heavy right yeah. good movie yeah, mm-hmm. we just like once. beat the fuck up after the baby's neck. <laughs> yeah, no, they were like, "Fuck like, you!" Burnt yeah. her to a crisp. <laughs> like, yeah, she pretty Shit. much just like died. She was a vessel essentially. Yeah, she was just a vessel. Which I guess is like, I guess the theme of it, like she is just this thing mm-hmm. that just yeah. creates and earth just will do you know what i mean like n- nature will just do yeah. yeah like all the people coming in were also like kind of references to the bible they had like the cain and abel stuff happening yeah oh, okay. yeah because they had those those brothers what well, was one of them killed the other or yeah something? with the rock just like i've never the... i dropped out of sunday school i never read <laughs> yeah. the bible yeah it was just like in the bible it was like cain and abel were brothers and killed them oh, in the house and yeah. i think it's worth watching at the time it, um last time i checked it was on prime mm-hmm. so is the baby supposed to be like Jesus, like Jesus, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's like a little representation of Jesus. How I guess like people who don't believe they kill the baby, like they, you know, it's kind of like forget this baby kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's like Jesus came to just essentially be just. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's almost like what I kind of got from it, like in retrospect, was like people will interpret God and Jesus in their own ways, and mm-hmm. religion will tear people apart more than it will unite people. Yeah, and so in this, in this chaos to like have jesus and to know it they pulled it apart yeah Mm -hmm. so and that's it's very visceral and very like brutal you know what i mean but i feel like that's kind of what i took it as it's like people will like interpret god in their own way Mm -hmm. and they will pit it against each other in their ways yeah and to like kind of add on to that because i felt the same way and then um like adding on to the end where um like they destroyed everything Mm -hmm. that was like essentially mother earth you know Mm -hmm. so they destroyed all of it like literally it was like a shell of the house like the house was walls were gone like it was just like it was just pillars essentially and then the guy like um portraying god at least from what i took it like pretty much took her heart out of her chest and set it up on like a pedestal and everything just started forming again so everything just pretty much started over it's like we destroy ourselves trying to do this like religion shit and then none of it really matters anyway mm. it all just kind of starts over after yeah like everything will just the cycle continues yeah, yeah. it's like, just him and the house or the earth and that's it so that's over. all it is we're just in a yeah. loop and it just yeah <laughs> although we just spoiled the fuck out of it you should still watch it. yeah, yeah. you should still i mean i kind of <laughs> like you should still watch it i mean because i had watched the re- review on it a long time ago and so yeah after watching that review i was like well technically it's been spoiled like yeah (laughs) Yeah. because because i got how you know because someone had was like yeah technically it's about like a representation of god and mother earth and all these people come but javier bardem is very like forgiving he's supposed to be like a god figure like no because he is like the whole film like they're these characters give Jennifer Lawrence's character plenty of reason to not let them in their house mm-hmm. and to not rationalize like, no, we we're not going to let them stay. No, we're not going to give them solid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything. And Javier Bardem's character is just like, no, 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 it's fine. Or like, yeah, it's yeah. already done. Or like, well, they're staying. You're like, it's just pretty much like, it's chill. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess that's God is. Oh. God. Yeah. It's like literally destroying everything that she's like putting into the and house. He just and looks everything. past it beyond it because what happens the cycle continues you know what i mean like things are just going to be like nature and the world and fate are just gonna have their fucking ways yeah scary yeah and people are pissed they like (laughs) walked out of the theater yeah i never saw it at these i remember i streamed it and fucking poor brie man my friend brie she's a mom and she's like a a little boy and (laughs) like there are certain movies like i can recommend to her and there are certain where she's like jen you know what i mean and so like (laughs) She came to work one day and she was like, have you heard of this fucking movie called Mother? And I was just like, yeah, I've heard of it. I just thought I thought it was lame. I didn't know if it was going to be good. So I just, it's sometimes I am a little bit of elitist and I will just kind of like be like, mm, I don't want to watch it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I was like, I don't know if it's going to be good. It just seems kind of boring. And she was like, no, like, watch it, please. And it fucked me up, Jen. And like, and when I saw what it was like, oh, my God, you shouldn't have watched it, dude. Like, yeah. I was just like oh, that's on you, man. Shouldn't yeah. have watched it. But it is a great movie. Um, see what else he's doing. I know. I was looking at some of their stuff. Uh, Jackie is in there. I have not watched it fully, but I've oh, seen lots of clips. I thought it was Natalie Portman. Huh? Yeah, with oh, Natalie, Natalie Portman. Portman. Okay. Yeah. I haven't watched that. I heard either. that's a really great performance. I have. Um, 
I don't know why. This is so nasty. I hate like admitting these things on this podcast, but y'all get to know me. But like every now and then I go down these rabbit holes about the JFK assassination mm. and oh like God, Jackie O and stuff. And it really bums me out that we're literally going to be dead by the time her yes. her outfit is like actually right. put on display again. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah, like there are some like... things that are just we're, in our lifetime we're never going to see. Hmm. Yeah. Like I want to say her thing will be opened in like 110 years. Mm. It's because the supposedly a lot of people that were involved with it are still alive. So they didn't even yeah. die off? And then on top of that too, it gives a bad reputation to because a lot of their sons and daughters are in politics so that's another reason why too that so, makes sense yeah. so it'll probably be something we'll never truly get to see yeah. <laughs> they're not even going to release like the files and stuff for for like a long time right? yeah i think all of that will be released like in the library of whatever well, congress or what, well, what do they call it well the- trump was supposed to release them all and he had promised that he was but i think when it came time to i think the ones that are like really in charge were probably like yeah <laughs> like they were like oh damn we didn't know you're gonna get this far. yeah <laughs> i meant to tell you no <laughs> yeah. to tell you no. yeah i go through those rabbit holes too i don't know why something about the yeah there there's a documentary that came out on netflix i can, i don't know what it's called but i saw like an interview about it i guess like the actual raw footage of the actual zaputer film mm-hmm. was released oh, shit. and it's like Oh, yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. I've been watching that oh, shit wait. since I was, like, yeah. 11. Oh, well, no, no, no. Like, okay. so, so, like, there's the one that we've seen. There's, like... Uh, Is there editing to that or There's what? some editing. Like, if you look at the Zapruder film that's that we all know and seen, there there's a tree in the background. Like, for some reason, part of it's, like, cut off for some reason. But, like, the actual, like, raw footage, like, it looks more realistic now. Mm. Like, I guess they cleaned it up and... Uh, uh, like it looks more clear than what it actually does. Like you can see uh, Jackie Kennedy, like say like, Oh my God, like clear, like, like clear as day. Yeah. yeah. Um, So there was a, I I don't know what it's called, but I recently uh, saw a little snippet of it and um, yeah. JFK stuff is it's Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, it's pretty heavy, but because I go down those rabbit holes, I stumble onto scenes from Jackie a lot. Specifically, mm-hmm. like the the scene I always stumble on is like immediately after the assassination when they take her like on like the the plane so she can like swear in the other president and she's still wearing her like same outfit and she's like, no, I'm not yeah. changing. Like, you know like, what oh, I mean? Yeah, she's like, yeah it's just, it's a really, and like there's like a scene where she's like traveling in the hearse next to his casket, but he's like still like freshly like dead and so she's still in her pink outfit and she's just like right next to her husband's coffin yeah. when like 12 hours yeah. earlier she was like literally just sitting next to him uh, there was another it's crazy there were, uh now we're going to the jfk conspiracy territory <laughs> I, I, I recently <laughs> saw um another reason why uh because jfk is considered one of the most like ill presidents like he was very sick a really? lot of the times, like he oh, he yeah. was like in bad health. Yeah, he was having to wear like a back brace and stuff, right? Well, like apparently that's why he couldn't get down because he had like a back <laughs> brace, so like, and that's why he couldn't yeah. like duck. So it's like once it hit him, he just had to yeah. keep taking it, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Actually, that oh god, that's yeah. fucking awful. Yeah. yeah, there was like a video that I watched like last year, I think, and it was this like mortician lady mm-hmm. and she did like a whole like hour hour and a half long video about um how they handled um jfk's body and how um jackie was like really integral in a lot of that stuff it was super dude i bet yeah because like she was like all business about it like yeah. she was just void like she was just like make it make it like make it work make it work but yeah yeah um was it um ask a mortician was it that person on youtube possibly i know she has like the does she have like the bitty bangs? bangs yeah yes dude and she's very like better of fact yes. yeah okay yeah that's it i fucking love her youtube page so before i became a hairstylist oh well, i started doing cosmetology when i was a junior in high school but before i got accepted to cosmetology in my head i was going to be a mortician mm. I, that's the path i was going to take i was going to do mortuary school so I was, I've been watching her stuff since I was like 19 or so. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And I, I still always say like, if for whatever reason I completely burn out and I don't want to touch hair, I don't want to fuck with it anymore. I would totally scrap everything and go back to school for the mortuary sciences. Yeah. 
but interesting i i really like her page especially or her youtube because she's like um i don't know if she still is anymore but she used to be like a organic mortician yes. so like they do like natural funerals yeah. so like instead of like the casket being like made of like metal and like wood mm -hmm. it's like made of like wicker and like they they put like greenery and like Mm. essentially things that are going to decompose with you yeah like organic things like padding and stuff like that around you and surround you with it and they put like floral things around you so you don't stink and like yeah and yeah it's just really interesting yeah i remember when jen told me that i was like that's weird because at one time i considered going into the mortuary, mortuary school, sciences yeah. well in my head like it was like i was okay besides me being on my freak shit when i was like 15 16 and being like goth as fuck like <laughs> i literally was like you know what this job will take me anywhere because technically this is a morbid thought but death is everywhere so work will always be there and it's a job where i don't have to interact with people which is so fucking funny that i am a yapper <laughs> in front of a camera and i don't shut the fuck up with my clients ever so it's, yeah. it's really crazy that i ended up i don't know going in that direction yeah, see i worked for a funeral home for a little bit like uh two months a few years ago or, uh, it was a while back now how Gosh. was that um i actually really loved it it yeah. was fun I and mean, in my head i'm like it's like what an honor to do that for a family yeah you know what i mean like that gives you know uh i feel like preparing a service like that if you have a body to work with and stuff like you can bring a lot of closure to a family mm -hmm. to really say that final goodbye. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just, I, I just, I saw all those little things and I guess now it does make sense. They became a hairstylist because I do like to fix and help and prep, you know what I mean? And like make you feel better. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Cause what I did was just, um, I would set up like the tents and the chairs, like the service. Pretty yeah. Much outside. Just prepping everything. Yeah. And like we would, um, lower the caskets and. Um, set up the lowering devices and stuff and like if uh, my coworker was the one that would like dig the holes and so i would just kind of tag along with him yeah. but it was a really cool job i'd it be an ass i'd be like kicking in dirt <laughs> <laughs> i remember in high school we, we did a little field trip to uh, uh they're called morgues right is that what it is uh -huh. yeah i mean we didn't see no bodies they cleared did it, it smell uh it just it had like a chemical smell mm -hmm. like because they use all that bombing fluid and yeah. all that and then we saw the are you talking about a mortuary? Mortuary, yeah. I was like, because a like, morgue's going to smell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> morgue's going to stink. <laughs> so, like, um, yeah, like, we saw the, the oven where they burned the bodies and yeah. all that. Damn. But they were saying, like, it really don't smell because it, like, burns to a crisp where it's just, like, there's just nothing left at all. Mm. That's insane. Because it, it goes up. I don't, I don't know the actual temperature, but it's, like, over a 1,000, yeah. like, degrees. It burns quick and fast. Yeah. yeah, I learned a lot of shit about death when I like were talking with like the funeral directors and mm -hmm. stuff because I didn't know, at least in the smaller towns, the mm -hmm. funeral directors are also the ones that are doing like the embalming process. Mm -hmm. And technically, you're, you're like on call 24 All seven, right? Yeah, because I mean, when does death, death isn't going to wait? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got to go pick him up. You got to go. A guy I used to work with, he used to work there. He was like, really he was like, yeah, <laughs> you'll be out partying and drinking and you get a call and you gotta go work so yeah it was i worked a lot it was like a six day six days a week you know sundays because mm. people don't really have funerals on sundays yeah. but yeah i was just um we would just go all around town you know i went to like every cemetery that was around like a 50 mile radius that's crazy any i'm sure jen would want to <laughs> listen but any like creepy like you witness any creepy or felt anything creepy um i mean being not as much as i thought i was yeah. going to i did hear some i did ask like my um my boss like what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to him and it's kind of a really sad story and i bet jenna want to hear it so mm -hmm. wait till she gets back but my other co-worker actually had worked for a um a crime scene cleanup service before this oh, and he was talking about how that was just like really crazy he would just see all sorts of like fucked up shit and like he, it was another on-call thing because you can't yeah you, it would be like you'd be 3 a.m and just like gotta go clean up some nasty yeah. shit yeah and like i mean i've seen i've had like some random ass jobs <laughs> so yeah. i've seen like I, I was trying to be an emt for a little bit so mm -hmm. i 
I did like my rounds for like four days. I saw like some of the nastiest shit. I saw my first dead body, which was a little weird. Um, it didn't affect me as much as I thought it was going to. There was like another thing that I saw that affected me more. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine being an actual like detective or investigator where you actually have to see it. But on top of that, review the uh the pictures over and over right, to make just, sure like, keep seeing it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I heard like crazy stories whenever I was doing that for a little bit. Um like I, I felt like like the kid stuff would have really uh, thankfully <coughs> I didn't see any kid things but Well it would be that and then people that you actually know. Right. Yeah, that'd be pretty hard to deal with. Yeah. Like, um, cause I went out to Amarillo to do the rounds for that. Mm-hmm. And so thankfully I don't really know anyone in Amarillo, but yeah, I saw like my first dead body doing that. And like, um, it was just like a, a CSI, like there was crime scene tape and detectives taking pictures, just That's police insane. everywhere. Mm-hmm. There was like the family morning, like outside, you know, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, I forget that. <laughs> yeah. And everyone was checking in on me. They're like, are you okay? Because, like, we we promise this isn't how it always is. And I was like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> like, what can I do? Yeah, like, you know really what I mean? I'm just anything. a fly on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, but. Did well, you ever, I always had to take it to this. Um, did you ever experience anything spooky while working at a funeral home? I was just, yeah, I was waiting for you to come back so I could say this. I did. Yeah, okay. Because, <laughs> because we were like, we should wait for Jen probably. Yeah. So. That's what I was thinking of when I was thinking. I was like, hopefully they're not even talking about ghosts. <laughs> hopefully they wait. Yeah. So I didn't experience anything like super creepy, but um, I mean, it was always just really heavy, like having all that stuff around and like seeing mm-hmm. like, um, seeing the dirt settle like throughout the times like you would go back to the yeah and you would just kind of see like oh we were there a month ago yeah it's like oh i did that like oh now we're over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um i mean the cemeteries that i was at um like the main one was Tohoka for some reason and i actually have like a lot of family out there which is weird mm-hmm. <laughs> cuz i would like just go visit cuz i never really go out there my dad has a lot of family out there yeah mhm Dang, I'm like, are you, where's your I'm like, family? are we pretty much? I know. Like, <laughs> where, where's your family from? Like, like my, all my family's from like O'Donnell and like Post. We're from Slayton, Tahoka, and Brownfield. Okay, see, I'm from Brownfield. I oh, grew up in shit. Brownfield. Y'all know any Alamans? I don't know. Or, or <laughs> Irachetas? It's like maybe. I don't fucking. I know faces. What kind of name is that? I've never heard of that name. I know the Irachetas. I've never heard that name before. Yeah, that's my like dad's food. mom's maiden name. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like a chip flavor yeah uh, like, it sounds like it sounds like food <laughs> it sounds like it would taste really good <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know anyone i don't think so. i mean i know faces better i really um i just grew up there but i went mm-hmm. to school in meadow oh okay yeah but uh yeah most of my family's from o'donnell and um post but yeah i would just be in Tokyo all the time and i would just like go look at my family i'm like oh this is... yeah but my uh boss had like i mean i don't know if it's spooky but it's a really messed up story and it's kind of funny but it's not <laughs> <laughs> no we laugh <laughs> yeah, like, so basically um how it would work is like we would uh, set up all the shit and then uh take the or put the help the people put the casket onto the lowering device mm-hmm. well for this instance my boss said that um it was a baby, so it was a little. Casket. It was just in a little box, yeah, like a little tiny box. So, my boss went to go put the the box on the little like altar they had for it at the funeral thing. He drops the box. Oh, <laughs> damn. And, oh and I mean, luckily no. it's like sealed, but um, yeah, it definitely like they. He said that they could hear it just like. Shuffle oh, in damn. there, and so when you, you heard, t- oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Just kidding. laughs> he was like, so I went to pick it back up, and like he felt it all on one side, and oh, so he was God. like, I didn't. I was like, am I just supposed to be like? <laughs> Yeah, like, so did he have like, 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 did he have to fix it? Yeah. Like, yeah, he had to he, pull it out somewhere else? Yeah, just, like... It's like a <laughs> yeah. like Christmas Shifted present, back. like... Yeah, <laughs> and, like, I mean, the family saw it and everything. Oh, so Were they... Oh, I'm oh, sure yeah, they were he, fucking... He said they oh, were just hysterical. Oh, they were... Shit. Yeah, he's like, that was the worst experience of my life. And it's an accident. Yeah, yeah he didn't mean to drop it. But 
it was just like oh my gosh like they're babies in there <laughs> my <It's> so <laughs> like, yeah just like shuffling in back, man. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard this story many times my dad had a he does tile so they did some work at a funeral home mm. well there was a there was the tile guys but there was also electricians that were there mm. and uh the electricity people they had to like drill a hoe and a hole in one room and they had to feed like all this wire into it mm-hmm. and uh well when they were feeding the wire i guess they didn't really pay attention where that wire was going to oh, and uh apparently like later on that night they were going to do like a viewing and uh like it was going to be like a, a viewing funeral, funeral where people come and see well when they fed the wire um i guess they were trying to look for it well they opened the they opened this one door no one was in there but i mean there was a dead body in there on the casket but it was open all that wire was like Had all piled on the in pile the casket on, yeah. shit <laughs> <laughs> That's really oh, just imagine just like wire like just like so, just, like somebody's ghost is like oh, the shit off. <laughs> just watching like man, <laughs> like why not fix my hair? Why are yeah. y'all doing me like that? <laughs> oh man, That's fucked. I'm sure there's a lot of crazy. I, like I've heard some crazy stuff. Like I guess people that work at funeral homes and they do the mortuary. Like I've heard some crazy things. Like how bodies that people work on. I guess people that are very, um, uh, in, how do you say it? If, uh, They're like empaths. Yeah, empaths where it's almost like they can feel the sadness from that person that died. Right. Yeah, like I'm just like, man, I don't know if I could deal with that. Yeah. That I was- think that's also like, it's a good thing I didn't go into that because yeah. like, I don't, not to be on like any like woo woo shit, but I can I can kind of see myself being like a little like sensitive to things, not mm-hmm. like in like a psychic way, but just like emotionally. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I can just if they're like really heavy emotions, like I'll just carry it. Like it just I'll get sad or I'll get emotional with yeah. you, whatever. Yeah. And so I feel like I do that with hair, obviously. You know what I mean? But it's got a positive impact more than not. You know what I mean? And so I feel like if I were to have um, pursued something like that, it would have been hard to separate work yeah. from life you know what i mean and death is everywhere death yeah. is, it's just as unfortunate as it is and as you know and i've learned this recently like has his life you know what i mean like it just happens Man. so yeah. What, yeah was it roy that was telling us that i supposedly since we're, we're talking about movies uh-huh. <laughs> i know i'm like <laughs> um did was it roy that was telling us i guess whenever you die I guess like whatever your nerves like position. I was talking about it. On. Yeah. Okay. So I was, I was saying, um, I, I learned this thing that was like sometimes I guess like, I guess like part of like rigor mortis and like atrophy or whatever is like, um, sometimes the body will have, of course, like jolts of like movements, right. but sometimes the body will remember its last movements. So this person had said like, for example, they were, prepping somebody and this person had had a asthma attack Mm. and so when they were passing away they were you know holding themselves right and so they were getting ready to prep this body or do whatever they had to do and that the body just their the hands just went towards the neck and grabbed their own neck you know what i mean and so they had to like pull the deceased hands from the neck because it just it was like it was the last movement that the body remembered yeah. yeah, yeah. I've heard of jolts like that, where like people just like sitting up. I've shit. heard of that a lot. Like yeah. yeah, I've heard of that, and also like bodies have gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they'll be like farting it up, whatever, <laughs> in like the yeah. morgue. Um, but I've never. I didn't know that they had. That's actually fucking awful. Yeah, like, I didn't somebody know. Somebody died like a violent death or something. That's fucking scary. Yeah, like fighting for their life and shit. <laughs> yeah, like can you just imagine like well, a fucking body? Just, especially like if someone had passed away in a car accident and they like mm-hmm. right, just like yeah. Bracing. Oh God, you just. See that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. My, I was like, we're not even talking about movies. It's like, <laughs> yeah, another we, story. No, this kind of has become our own podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, like yeah. death conspiracy. We circle thing. back around, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. But if it's not spooky shit, that. we when it's Jen, we always got to talk yeah, about spooky ask. shit. I always have to ask. Like, you just never know. Yeah, I could talk about spooky shit forever. I love hey, spooky Roy. shit. <laughs> have you seen anything cool lately? 
Um, watching anything TV show wise? TV wise. What about film wise? <laughs> like TV. Sh- I just started watching. Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's you like, like it? I I like it a lot. I've never watched it from episode one. Yeah, I just I started it from episode one. It's I really enjoy it. <laughs> it was fine, this but all of, all of a sudden it keeps on. It was fine. All of a sudden, we start talking like, about spooky shit. Yeah, it's because of the candles. <laughs> what else? Did I? I feel like I've watched a lot of stuff. I just can't remember. What's the last movie you watched in theaters? Or at home? In theaters? Oh wait, you know what? I just thought of one because I watched it when I was really sick. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called Earth Girls Are Easy, and I feel like it should be talked about more. Oh, is that the Jim Carrey and yes. Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, and like that? Gina Davis. It's, yeah, it's a oh, young I love Gina Davis. It's a young Gina Davis, a young Jim Carrey, young Jeff Goldblum and a young um one of the Wayne's brothers, Damon, Wayne? Damon Wayne. Yeah. So the Jim Carrey, the Wayne brother and uh Jeff Goldblum, they're technically aliens. Okay. Yeah. And so, but they're like, it's like corny aliens. Like, yeah. they're like, mama, 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 like that uh-huh. kind of yeah. aliens. They're kind of dressed like the Grinch, but like different colors. Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> and so, Gina Davis has to, like, I haven't seen that shit in years. It's like Gina Davis has to deal with them. Okay. Like, tries to blend them in and fit them in, but they're aliens. So they just weird in public. Where'd you watch this on? Um, it was on like Tubi or something. I bet that shit was on Tubi. <laughs> yeah, like, I, know, I, was, I was just like looking for shit to watch because I was like, Man, I'm bored. I've, I've been sick for a few days. So I was like, I feel like I've watched everything. Uh-huh. And I was like, Gina Davis and Jim Carrey and Jeff Goldblum. I was like, what the fuck is this? I almost <laughs> like when I get sick because I actually have time to like, right. I'm like, I'm over here rotting. Like, I might as well like watch yeah. that thing. So I kind of, I look forward to it. It was like kind of trippy, like kind of had um, Beetlejuice type visuals at some point. I was going to say, it kind of sounds like fever dreamy, just like that cast it was alone. Very like, fever just because Gina D- Davis is like, I can imagine young Gina Davis and like young Jeff Goldblum and yeah. then Jim Carrey is just cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. I yeah. Really I forgot it. it was called that too. Earth, Earth Girls. Earth, Earth Girls, girls are, are easy. Yeah, okay. It's because the aliens, they they want to like have sex with girls. That's okay. pretty much their, okay. their whole thing. Perfect. It's like they're all happy that they landed on Earth and shit. <laughs> nice. It's like, wow. what, else, what else have you watched? What's the last movie you watched in theaters? I haven't watched a movie in theaters in a while, actually. I'm trying to think of what I watched. Last one I remember, I'm a big Marvel head, so I watched Guardians 3 in theaters. Did it wreck you? It did. It hurt I, me in my soul. <laughs> so speaking about jarring movies, how we were talking earlier, I will never watch that movie again. Me either. Oh no, I will never. Roy, so I... I will watch Marvel films. I'm not like anti Marvel. You know, it's just like I don't keep up with like the lore enough, like yeah. um, like the Disney Plus shows enough to like know what's canon and stuff. Right. But I'll watch the movies in theaters. But Roy Roy takes me to those, and the movie starts, and I'm like kind of excited because I love Guardians. Like they're yeah. always feel good. You yeah. know what I mean? They get a little dark, but they're always like fine. It's like Thor. Like they're always just good movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the movie starts, and Roy's like. <laughs> and you know it was awful that trapping you while you're yes in the i was over here like <laughs> crying like full-on crying over these like cgi animals right i was a wreck floor i always Her feel like floor. They, <laughs> they honestly need to give oscars to best voice actors because bradley cooper in that movie like is that the guy who plays rocket yeah because yeah. bradley cooper that played rocket i yeah. mean like the screams that he did yeah. like in pain like I'm sure even Bradley Cooper's a great actor. Oh, hell yeah, I like yeah. I love Bradley Cooper. Yeah, for sure. Not just because he shares my name, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you're named after Bradley Cooper. That's what I always tell. <laughs> Sometimes I always tell people like it's Bradley, like Bradley Cooper, mm-hmm. especially when older Mexicans don't know how to say <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, how do they say it? They're like Brad Brandon. <laughs> like no Bradley. Yeah, Bradley. <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> 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 Bruno? Yeah, that movie messed me up. That's a good one. It was good. That's I, a good one. Have any other Mar- Marvel movies have come out since then? Right? Um, um, I think, I mean, the, the shitty has? Sony ones have. Uh, like, the I, Mar- have I didn't get to watch uh, Madam Web. I no. wanted to go watch it. I haven't watched it, but I watched like a review of it, and he pretty much talked about the whole movie, and I was like, I don't need to watch this. This no. is terrible. I heard it's it. so bad. I, yeah. I, I want to watch it. I want to no. watch it. You know? Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, the last one that came, the last Marvel Studios film was uh, the Marvels, oh, but the even Lizzie but Marvel. even I didn't get I didn't go see that yeah, one. I didn't either. I watched it on um, Disney Plus though. So yeah, I, it. I just is that one is that the one with the girl like the younger ones? Oh uh, yeah, it's like Captain Marvel and then um, the girl from WandaVision. I forgot her name. I think it, she turns into Photon eventually. Yeah, and then um, the spoiler Marvel. alert. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think right now Marvel's in a weird place. They're trying to, because the next Marvel film is going to be Deadpool 3. Yeah. And so there's talks that Deadpool's going to kill off the the bad, like the old Marvel stuff. Oh. And it's going to like kind of reset everything again. Yeah. They kind of should. Yeah. They kind of should it's because. Getting tired. <laughs> well, I mean, COVID kind of obviously like wrecked Marvel's franchise. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, just with like how they had to like go about making their films and i feel like the quality of their stories really went down for a minute right um yeah i'm totally down for them just kind of like yeah yeah i mean disney disney plus really did hurt them because it it was easy for people to follow because it was like you had to watch two movies maybe three a year and then the avengers movie would come out right but now they're like well you gotta watch two movies this part of the year or this movie comes out this season. then you have to watch this series mm-hmm. that comes in between and then there's now a cartoon that goes along with it yeah. it's just made no, it no that's more. why i fell off on the disney plus like star wars canon shit i mm. was like y'all killed a really great franchise yeah obviously it's cool like i'm still gonna i'll be eating it up like in theaters you know what i mean like watching any star wars productions that get made in the future mm-hmm. right but having to like like the Clone Wars being an animated series that was also canon was enough, and then to add on like three or four other like sub series to like have to complete a story, yeah. I'm like I don't. It had so much content. And yeah, then and I also just was not a fan of that final trilogy with Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. I just feel like they they family valued the franchise when it could have just stayed dark. Yeah, but I don't know. And then I've heard that the next man instead of Mandalorian season three. It's going to end up being a movie. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so. Yeah, see, I completely fell off Star Wars. I, like, grew up watching them. I really enjoyed them. But, yeah, like, even, like, ten years ago, I kind of quit watching it. Star <laughs> Wars is it's one of my favorite film, film franchises. And, I've obviously, I finished out this last trilogy. But um, it was just kind of, like, finishing it out. Because you have to see it through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's kind of where I am with Marvel sometimes. And like yeah. other movies. Like I'm just kind of like I have to see it through. Yeah. But, uh, I was talking about seeing things through. Has anybody seen the Maxine trailer? I was. Yeah. I saw that today. I've seen stills of it. Do y'all it, think Maxine's going to fuck the Night Stalker? <laughs> that was like, do you think amazing. she's going to fuck Richard Ramirez? Did you watch it? No. I've, I've only seen oh, stills think of it. about that. Well, it's, it's obviously set in LA in the 80s. Mm-hmm. But it's in this trailer and I was literally talking about this in a podcast yesterday. I don't watch trailers, but I, for Maxina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the night stalker is an active serial killer mm-hmm. at the same time as Maxine Minx is loose in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. And so, um, it, it seems like everybody is like terrified of the night stalker and she's like, Oh no, I can handle my own. Yeah. Right. And, but she's also, I think her past is coming back to get her. Uh, but I am, I'm really excited because, um, I heard that Maxine is like an ode, is Ty West's ode to Giallo and like a certain type of like subgenre of horror. You know what I mean? So yeah. I am excited. But also, we recently have you ever seen House of the Devil? No. Check that out. Oh. We re- we watched it in theaters um, Friday, but it's it came out two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. Um, Ty West, who did Pearl and X and Maxine, that right. was one of his first films. Oh. Okay. Um, it's really really cool, but it kind of. It doesn't necessarily speak about it too loudly, but it is like in a satanic panic type of era. I feel like it's kind of set in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited to see. I think like Ty West is like, he kind of always comes back to that satanic panic type of thing. So I'm. Yeah. T.I. West. 
T-I-Y-S. Even I called him that one. He just has like that sideways hat on. He's like, I make the film. I still need to watch Pearl. I haven't seen Pearl yet. I haven't seen Pearl either. I fucking hate Pearl. Really? I hate it. See, I loved it. I, I, thought, I thought X was cool, but also like I'm a slasher girl. Mm. Like I like slashers, and I like them. I like them horny. I like them yeah. nasty. I like them in Texas. You know <laughs> what I mean? So I just love that that vibe of right. horror movies. And also the st- the cast was stacked. Yeah, like Brittany Snow, Kid Cudi, um, Jenna Ortega. Yeah, Jenna Ortega. Yeah, like yes. that was like kind of right right before she like hit her Wednesday theme. Yeah, or whatever. And so that was really cool. And like at the time, Jenna Ortega. She still is like a scream queen, but she was like consistently like in like random little horror movies, mm-hmm. you know, before she really hit it big. But yeah, um, Pearl's good. Pearl's good. Don't let me like de- deter you from it. But um, I just I wanted to almost like root for Pearl, mm. but she was so fucking annoying. Mm. <laughs> she was so fucking annoying. It Damn, was, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, um, she's a horse girl. Mm-hmm. She's a horse girl. That. And she that throws tantrums. She throws tantrums. <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know mm-hmm. about Pearl. Pearl would love Taylor Swift. <laughs> Pearl set in Texas too. Pearl right? would love the pink drink. Huh? Right. It's it's Pearl set in Texas. Uh yes. It's, it's, it's on the same ranch. Yeah, like that same Texas. Race That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. It starts off not with her husband. Uh, what's but his it's name? but it's also the. It deals with the pandemic of the, the Spanish flu. Yeah, the Spanish oh, flu. Okay. Shit. Yeah, so it's set in the Spanish flu pandemic, and um, it's this isn't a spoiler, but it's revealed that um, that ranch house is Pearl's childhood home. So she's mm-hmm. growing up with her parents in there. Okay. And her mom is a is a is a German woman who's very like a hard ass, and then her dad is um, like bedridden, like okay. bedridden. Is the old lady an ex Pearl? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Pearl. I, I need I need to rewatch yes, it. Yes, you do. It's been too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Pearl and X were filled were filmed simultaneously. So oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, so Ty West presented X and Pearl hmm. together, filmed them simu- simultaneously. So Mia Goth was playing Maxine Minx, this like porn star stripper, or whatever, and also playing Pearl, this like psycho jealous raging bitch you know what i mean and it was Damn. yeah so i i just give major props to her i yeah. think i think she's great even though she's got that weird voice yeah so yeah i am excited to see this through I, yeah, I, i'm a fan already, of maxine that was already yeah. three, three years, years ago. ago we saw three years that ago. yeah you remember that roy yeah because uh we're in dallas yeah right. i was i did some work in fort worth and they went to dallas and i Mm. Drove an hour and a half to go meet them and watch the movie. Dang. Yeah. Didn't you say that you were going to go see Oppenheimer? I did go see Oppenheimer in, yeah, in, you in Dallas. Dallas. How was that? It was it was badass. Yeah. Seeing it like in the... I mean, because we have an IMAX, but it's not like a true, true IMAX. Right. Like over there, it's like the full on... Like they have the full on reel like that's like Damn. five mi- two miles long or whatever it is. That's crazy. And so... Um, yeah, that was an amazing experience. Wasn't it 11 yeah. miles? Yeah, I think so. It's something oh, like, like the shit. role, like once it was extended, it was like 11 miles worth of film. Yeah. Wow. Like it's seriously like probably big, bigger than that. Yeah. Like they have to have. Do they, they have like I multiple think, people like hoisted on? And yeah, stuff? I think they have to like mm-hmm. put it like on a dolly to like Damn. actually move it. <laughs> That's crazy. Did you get to watch it this summer? I did. Well, I got to watch. I did the whole Barbenheimer mm-hmm. thing. We did too. Me <laughs> yeah, and I did. Like, yeah, me and my wife were just like over it. But I was like, did you guys? Which so which did you do first? Um, I think we did Oppenheimer first because like Barbie would be like just in case Oppenheimer was like really heavy. heavy. Yeah, yeah. Like, this will be like lighthearted, so we can like chill. That's literally what we did. <laughs> yeah. We watched because we th- we thought the same thing. Okay, like it'll be easier to digest Barbie. We thought, and then Barbie's just yeah, like yeah, Barbie oh, was like oh, 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 like rethink <laughs> my life and shit. She's having it. Crisis. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how's my mom? <laughs> like, uh, like, women just go through so much. <laughs> it was good though. I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I thought it was very trippy when you know you watch Oppenheimer, then you go see Barbie and she's like, Did any of you guys ever think about dying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I literally have this past four hours, right? It's like I literally for the love of God, do something oh, funny. <laughs> and it was just heavy. Yeah, like please, like sparkles in the air or something. I need something. Oh man. Like, that yeah. was fun. <laughs> Before we start wrapping this up, I I want to know what is your theory on The Shining, or what is your okay? <laughs> like I have 
like the shining is I'm like my baby yeah yeah like the shining is my baby yeah i have one of the twins oh nice on my keychain i also have a tattoo on my leg of jack torrance oh no way yeah let me like, see. maybe see maybe i could show it to you oh god that's right there it's, hold on it's like flashlight that's fucking sick. he's like frozen Oh like shit. The, the scene at the end where he's frozen. Oh shit. Nice. Did it hurt in that spot? <laughs> it hurts so bad. <laughs> that was like one of the most painful tattoos I've ever gotten. But I want to, once I'm not such a broke bitch, I want to get um, Wendy on the other side, like holding the bat, looking really. Oh, that'd be cool. So, like on opposite yeah. sides. Yeah. Like looking all stressed out and shit. Um, so, yeah, The Shining is like my favorite movie of all time. Um, I've read like the book. I haven't read Doctor Sleep yet, but I've watched the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you like Doctor Sleep as like a sequel, or what were? I enjoyed as a big it. fan of The Shining. Yeah, I think. I mean, you can't really compare with like Stanley Kubrick, you know. But like, it did. I think it did it justice. I think so too. Like, I I didn't go into it like set on this is a Shining sequel. Right. I just kind of was like, okay, this is like within the same realm of right. that. And so I think it was easier for me to like it because of that because i had i gone in like i would have almost probably hated it because they they don't compare they don't even have the same type of vibe or anything whatsoever and so um i i really did like it it's it's really dark what's that girl's name that plays the one with the top hat oh my gosh she's awesome but she's like she was she killed it rebecca Rebecca hall maybe I don't totally know. It's wrong. Rebecca something. Yeah, <laughs> she was in Dune. She's she's in Dune yes. recently. Yeah, but yeah, no, her character was a really great villain. Yeah, I was really into it, and I mean, I'm Rebecca Ferguson. Ferguson. Yeah. See, I was gonna say Flanagan, but Mike Flanagan was the director, and I'm yeah. really into Mike Flanagan too, like the Haunting of Hill House. Okay, stuff. I was gonna say yeah. Refresh me on yeah, yeah Haunting like of Midnight Hill House. Mass and stuff. I haven't. To watch Midnight oh, that Mass. Was pretty good. Somebody spoiled the shit out of it for oh. me, and I was like, "Vampires? Oh, I don't want to do <laughs> it anymore." <laughs> so I thought that that was like a build up to it or yeah. something, and no, they're like, "It's about vampires," that. and I was like, cool. "I didn't know that going into it, so that probably would have ruined it." For yeah, me. no, completely. But, but I really like Mike Flanagan, so I was just like, "All right," like I, I had faith that he wouldn't completely ruin it because mm-hmm. I, I knew that he like respected Stanley a lot and stuff. But it was, um, so The Shining is like, I watched that movie um, for the very first time probably like seven or eight years ago and for some reason I was like um I was tripping on acid (laughs) and I was coming down so it was like after it was over and I just like for some reason wanted to watch something terrifying Mm -hmm. so I've watched The Shining and I just remember just being like completely enthralled for like the whole movie it just like sunk me in I can Um, imagine during a trip like that too I wasn't like I was just obsessed with it for like three days just like completely diving into it and it was just like um I watched like all sorts of theories like the Indian burial ground stuff Mm -hmm. like how they think the hotel was built on that and like there's a bunch of like um art and stuff and like American are these theories just kind of explaining how haunted the hotel is Um, or like it kind of it's like what the the reason why it is the way Mm -hmm. it is you know why it's so dark um because there's like it's built on like forbidden stuff you know yeah Yeah. okay but there's a lot of the art in the background is also like indian themed and um like there's buffaloes on the walls Mm -hmm. and um that's like one of the theories um was it stanley kubrick telling the world or confessing to the world that he did the moon landing. The moon landing. See, I've heard that too. With Danny's what do you own. mean? So <laughs> when you look the 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 the, the design of the carpet um, is the way the rocket ship launches, and then Danny Danny wears Apollo Eleven sweater, mm-hmm. and then um, the the room two thirty seven. That's like how many thousands of miles the the moon is to the Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of oh my weird. God. Yeah, it's like Kubrick's like gentle flex. Yeah, like, right. check out this horror movie. Mm-hmm. I made it after I filmed the moon landing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different messages where it, you could connect it to somehow the moon landing. Yeah. Yeah. If you never heard of that theory before? No. If you look yeah. into it, you go down. I the honestly, hole I with didn't it. become like a Kubrick person. Honestly, like, the only time I've ever been obsessed with Kubrick was after 2001, A Space Odyssey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I can appreciate, like, he's the shit, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I'm not, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like, no, this is blowing my mind. Yeah, yeah. continue. I get that. Because, like, honestly, <laughs> I haven't really seen much um, Kubrick other Have stuff. you seen 2001 Space Odyssey? I've started it, but I never finished it. My best advice I can give you, and I tell all our guests this, wait till it's back in theaters. Because mm. it, it'll, it'll get a screening again in Alamo. Right. But that's the way to watch it. Right. I don't think my little brain would have, like, um, it wouldn't have stuck with it. Mm. like a home setting yeah see because i was just like i feel like this would be really cool on like a big screen Mm -hmm. no literally because it's um even like what is it like the first is it how many minutes is like that dark musical intro yeah so when the movie starts it's it's black for like 10 minutes oh damn and it's just like boom boom boom. like you just hear this music building it's just like this eerie like eerie like orchestra music like it was made for a theater like I mean, that's what I'm saying. I feel yeah. like, like, wait till you can immerse yourself in it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's like an actual intermission, too. Uh, like, it, it was seriously made to be, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to watch that. I did try and see The Shining in theaters last year, but like, right when it was starting to get to like the good shit where Jack was finally like really losing his mind, um, the power went out in the whole theater. Which was oh, kind of scary. No, too, that is scary. Oh shit. Damn. Can you imagine it? Like it's like it's like the scene where he's like going up the staircase and there's That was literally it. <laughs> oh my god. It was literally right like right whenever he was like, I just want to like fucking beat your brains in yeah. or and then it was just black. And then we, we were just sitting there like waiting, like what the fuck is happening? It's oh my god, my mind would have been to it would have gone so dark. My yeah. little brain would have been like, This is it. Yeah, it was a dead. really dark moment. Yeah. I was like <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like is something gonna happen right now? Yeah, I would. Oh, fuck yeah. no, that's terrifying. Right. Did you guys get rain checks? No, they reschedule. No, but we. So they did. Um, give was us that all free food? <laughs> oh, okay, that, that yeah, that works too. So yeah, we got like thirty bucks worth of food. I wonder if that was the same month because um, there was a month that they were doing like Kubrick films like I think every that week. Was it. Yeah, yeah, because they were doing. Oh, they did so. that. They did two thousand one. Did they do? They did all his films. They even did like his. Like early, yeah, they're doing like one or what, one or two a week. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but they and they the year before, then they had like a like a carpenter summer, so mm-hmm. they had like a John Carpenter month. So I, I guess oh, okay. they, I guess they spotlight different directors or filmmakers. Yeah. Have you ever seen Eyes Wide Shut? No, I started that one too. It used to be on Tubi. Yeah. It used to be. I don't know yeah. if it's still on there. I think that's where I started it. I I've watched like little bits and pieces of. It. Honestly, if you ever rewatch it again, or if it comes out in theaters again. I would honestly wait to watch it during Christmas because mm. that's where it's because that's where it, that's when it's oh, okay. set in. So like it's a very Chris like it it has nothing to do with Christmas, but almost the entire movie is there's Christmas like decorations. Like it just fits right in season. Yeah, yeah, there's Christmas decorations in the back. So yeah, oh. yeah, it, it just kind of gives it like a Good eerie f- feeling. Like you're trying to figure out because like, like it's Christmas, you're trying to figure out what's more important. Mm. Yeah, that kind of thing. So, yeah, because uh, the first time I ever watched it, we watched it the week before Christmas, and it oh, was nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I think um, like The Shining's like a wintry type movie to me. At least The Shining I, is I, a holiday movie. So too. I recently saw um, a video explaining it. I guess it talks about like how long um, it tries to see how long they're there oh, until yeah. everything just goes to shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way this guy explained it was um, technically when everything goes to shit at the end of The Shining, it's technically it's either Christmas week or the or the week after Christmas, like mm, heading like into, that New void Year's. into New Year's. Mm-hmm. But there's no Christmas decorations because no, no one's, one's at there. the home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. Like even the the whole contrast between the book and the movie have you read have you read the book i've never read the book but um doesn't the book give more context about the spirits and stuff and isn't wendy like a little bit more involved slightly i would think i like i think that's the comparison so i i've watched the video talking about what's the difference it's between the book and the movie uh, it's a more like ghost story like yeah. okay maybe that's what I've heard like it just it has a lot more to do with like the spirits and stuff yeah. There, there's one uh, scene that they explain I kind of wish they kept it in the movie um, who's the other the, the old guy that also shines oh, what's his um, name God, I, I don't know, I know well, his real name well anyway <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> in the book they say when he pulls up to the hotel 
as soon as everything's going to shit inside, mm -hmm. he knows something's wrong because in his eyes, he sees the spirits flying away. Yeah. And that's why he's like going into the hotel. So I was like, that would have been a cool shot if they somehow did it. Yeah, were... all they did was just Did they kind of reference that in Doctor Sleep? Um, they put hip in the... Well, no, like when the spirits are like releasing. I can't remember, but the, the Doctor Sleep is kind of more like ghostly. Doctor Sleep yeah. honestly gave me rose red vibes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And also like I have heard like the with the shining, like Kubrick kinda completely like reiterated a lot of what that film was. You know what I mean? Yeah. I heard that like Stephen King hated the Yeah, shining, he was not happy with but it. He did like Doctor Sleep. So <laughs> have you ever heard of the um, Stanley Kubrick's like fuck you to to Stephen King on that movie was? Maybe. So <laughs> And the book, so in the movie, they drive a yellow um, Volkswagen Beetle, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, but in the movie, when the when the old guy is trying to get back up to the hotel, mm -hmm. he passes by. Oh, the truck. Yeah. He passes by a, a wreck. Well, yeah. it's a truck, and it smashed a red Beetle. Well, in the book, he drives a. They drive a red Beetle. Yeah. So that was like Stanley Kubrick's way of telling. Uh, Stephen King, like, fuck you. Like, it's my way, my yeah, way. Yeah, it's my, my movie, yeah. Yeah, see, I've always, yeah. like, with the comparisons of the book and the movie, the book is, like, to me, the the book is more, like, a hot representation, whereas the movie's a cold representation. Like, yeah. Okay. Because at the end of the book, the hotel, like, explodes. And, like. So did you ever get to watch, um, like, the miniseries version of The Shining that came out, like, on ABC in the 2000s? The one, like... It's kind oh of, it's, it's not It's good. like the shitty one, right? Yeah, yeah. See, but I've heard of it, that one ends it. with the hotel actually exploding. Yes, that one's more book accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard it was like so shitty though, so I never watched it. I think it's, I, I feel like if, because you're like, you're such a fan of both of them and like you're such a fan of the actual story and everything, you might like it. Yeah. Because it's, it's a mini series. It's not a, like, um, I want to say they cut it into two or three parts maybe. Okay. It, it was it was like a weekly thing. Oh, okay. Um, but I might check it out. Yeah, so it is kind of that. I remember watching that when I was younger. Like I was really, really young because my mom was watching it. Mm -hmm. And but I remember that almost felt, in retrospect, it was very drawn out. Maybe kind of a little bit more. Um, makes you feel a little bit like this shit is lasting forever. You know what I yeah. mean? So, um, but I do remember that the hotel explodes. Yeah, yeah, and I know in the book too, which they kind of had like little references of it in the movie. But in the book, it was kind of more clear that Jack was abusive to Danny. Okay. Because um, they, mm -hmm. they pretty much, they talked about Jack, like, breaking his arm in the book. And okay, and I've, I've read that, too. Like, um, Jack Nicholson just kind of made Jack seem insane and psycho versus actually abusive. So that kind of got a little yeah. bit blurred. You know, like, like he kind of came off more creep versus, like, yeah. abuser, if that makes sense. Both are abusers. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're more a lot more clear about that um hmm. yeah uh, like both of them had like their pros and cons you know but i don't know the movie just really like i mean the whole story is really interesting to me and how it's like interpreted in different ways it is a good movie yeah i feel like uh, um that's one of those like it's like the shining and like the halloween franchise and like even like the exorcist franchise like mm -hmm. they I've just, I've grown up with them, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's before our time, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, I feel like throughout my life, like, with other films, like, I will re-watch these things, and I'll kind of get attached to them in different ways, but at some points of my life, like, The Shining is just a movie to watch. It's just, like, okay, a cool, scary movie. It's long. It's, like, it's a, you have to watch it if you're into horror. You have to watch it if you're getting into film, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's one of those, like, staples. Yeah, but it's, at times, it is fucking terrifying yeah it's a terrifying movie and i that's why stephen king's a master of horror honestly because okay. it's like um his, his films do that throughout the years and they they have staying power for that reason mm -hmm. i've what this movie from the 80s 70s 80s yeah. Yeah, it's the 80s, 80s i think like early 80s. 1980 yeah yeah stephen king's creepy yeah, oh <laughs> he's like, swear he's like a crackhead yeah he's just well he, he is a former crackhead pretty much <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean you gotta Cause, be because you've heard about like when that. he directed like maximum overdrive how he was just mm -hmm. like hyped up on cocaine <laughs> that's why that movie was like bad bad that's why he never directed no, i mean the movie i just again. know like in like it like isn't like 
they're like traveling like on like alien turtles or something and like they're like going through all these like yeah the book it, <laughs> that's another weird one like the kids like actually like have sex yeah. oh yeah i know yeah. that yeah but, but still, i'm saying like the weird. actual like origin of pennywise or whatever like it's like and his, and his got enemies some, like a turtle or yeah. something like that. yeah it's something <laughs> where they, they try to go in that direction for the for chapter two or like they, they try to make it like that i don't know it was mm-hmm. just it a chapter two lost me i never got to see chapter two it lost me i've chapter one is yeah. you know what i mean but um chapter two is good mm-hmm. she's good um i think it was stronger in the first half of chapter two and then they got pushed for time i feel yeah. mm. i really feel like they they were trying to that franchise fell short in the last half of the second film mm. Mm. there's a series coming out apparently what? like his early years like what pennywise yeah oh Pennywise in the early years. Mm-hmm. So like, what's he, what's like, he doing? Like, I guess when just, he, what, like during... Like a circus kid. Yeah, pretty much. So. That's I'm going to fuck you up, meow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That was, this is a good one, man. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to promote before you let it go? Um, Sure. My band's got a song coming out in like a month, uh-huh. I think. A month or two. Or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're called Ghost Lux. We're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the stuff that you could find us on. We're on it. <laughs> so this episode will be out in. Let me see. Let me see if this is when this will drop. This episode will have dropped probably by next week or something. But so Ghost Lux will be performing at the chapel. Oh, yeah, we're going to be at the chapel on the 19th and Vinyl Thon on the 20th of April. There you go. Smoke some weed, buy some vinyl, check out Ghost Lux. Yeah, go watch us. <laughs> um, and then on the 24th, you're going to come to Studio C. You're going to come watch our Lords of Chaos screening. You're going to eat some you're gonna, food. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're, you're going to message me. You're going to tell me if you want chicken shawarma, if you want vegetarian shawarma. Oh, and then you're going to give me $15. <laughs> and then you're going to take your happy ass to Studio C, and I'm going to give you food and entertainment and we're going to give you an immersive experience but keep following us at lords of film with a z on instagram um you can check us out on youtube under the snake pit with rattlesnake snake roy where you can catch the snake pit and other lords of film episodes we are on spotify apple and whatever other platforms that podcasts are on and yeah you have anything you want to add bradley Nope. <laughs> awesome. We're just trying to pump out these episodes so we can take a little bit of break. But we are currently scheduling for May and June. If you want to come on, you don't have to be in a band. You can just, you can just, you could, you could, if you want to, you know, hop on and talk about stuff, or if you just want to chop it up with us, you can just be a fellow movie lover, and we're gonna talk to you regardless about the paranormal. Talk about and, dead bodies. Yeah, we're gonna talk to you about everything, anything and everything. Yeah. And um, I hope y'all's retinas are okay on April 9th and <laughs> onward. Yeah. Bye.